Please welcome the head of the partner organization at Amazon Web Services, Doug Yum. Welcome everyone to the 10th annual reInvent. Thank you all for being here. It feels so good to be here with all of you. Can you believe that it's been 10 years since our first reInvent? It's just incredible. And I know we have some folks in the room who have attended every single one. We really appreciate your support. This is my eighth year attending, and it certainly won't be my last. However, as many of you know, I am moving on to a new role inside Amazon, and Ruba Berno will be taking over as a new leader starting next week. I have learned so much from all of you, and it's just been awesome watching up close the amazing work that all of you do every single day for our joint customers. Today, it's all about celebrating your success and helping us prepare for the future. This year marks the 15th anniversary of AWS, and AWS continues to grow every single year. In our last earnings announcement, we reported that we're now a $64 billion annual run rate business that is growing at 39% year over year. Partners, all of you who have chosen to build your customer offerings with AWS, you've played such an important role in driving this growth. Today, we have over 100,000 partners providing customer offerings, and these 100,000 partners are operating across over 150 countries. And to ensure that these offerings are widely adopted by the millions of active AWS customers, we have been putting more focus on engaging partners on these customer opportunities. In 2021, AWS and AWS partners we have worked on hundreds of thousands of joint customer opportunities. And we've doubled the number of opportunities that we've shared with all of you year over year. We're seeing this increased focus translating into real business results, real growth for all of you. Partners like Snowflake, Logs.io, Confluent, they're telling us that the investments that we're making into things like having dedicated co-sales specialists in the field, as well as programs like ISV Accelerate, Global Startup Program, they're having a big impact on your business. You know, every time I hear about the results that we're driving, driving with our partners, I can't help but feel proud and grateful to be able to work with a community of partners who share our passion for customers and continuously build and innovate on their behalf every day. And that is why I feel so confident in advocating for all of you in front of our customers and our sales teams because I know you're different. You're not just selling a new technology or the next project. You're focused on building long-term relationships with your customers as trusted advisors. And we want to do the same with all of you. Build partnerships that outlast all of us in this room. Over the last 15 years, we have transformed how we deliver value to our global customers. Many of you have worked tirelessly to transform the services and products that your companies offer to customers. By transforming, you have built and grown successful businesses. But more importantly, you're delivering successful business outcomes to your customers. One great example of a partner that has transformed successfully is a company that I've had a chance to work with very closely ever since joining AWS. When I joined AWS back in 2014 to lead our business in South Korea, we didn't have a lot of partners back then. And you know, that wasn't a surprise to me because our business at that time in South Korea was just getting off the ground. But what was surprising was that I found out that there's one partner whose founder and CEO decided to make a big bet basically bet his company's future on AWS. That CEO was Max Lee, and the partner was Megazone Cloud. 
Megazone was founded as a web agency in 1998. But when Max saw how quickly the cloud business was taking off, he decided to transform his business and became the first AWS partner in South Korea. Megazone made a long-term commitment to AWS, and they worked really hard to deepen their capabilities and also deliver great results for their customers, earning trust from them and from our sales teams. So when the customer demand skyrocketed with the launch of the AWS region in Seoul in 2016, Max and his team, they were ready to support the customers and capture that demand. As a result, Megazone and AWS, we grew rapidly together. It's not a stretch for me to say that the AWS business in South Korea would not have grown as fast as it had without Megazone support. Since then, they have continued to invest aggressively in differentiating their customer offerings by leveraging the AWS competency program. They're now an AWS training partner, and they're also working with a number of global ISVs, companies like Datadog, New Relic, Databricks, to help them go to market in South Korea. Megazone is now one of our largest partners in APJ with over 3,000 customers, 1,400 employees, and half billion dollars in revenue in 2020. It's such an amazing growth story. We are seeing that being successful in the global market requires a shift in how you do business. Transformation is not optional anymore. It's essential to long-term business growth. There are a number of SI partners globally who are demonstrating that if you decide to transform with AWS, you will grow a successful business. Partners like Presidio in, in the US, NEC in Japan, Versa in Australia, and T-Systems in Germany, the list goes on and on. And we're seeing the same happening with our ISV partners who are working very closely with AWS to transform their software products. Partners like Infor, Vtex, Iron Mountain, they're leveraging AWS native services and integrating them into their existing customer offerings to enhance the value that they bring to their customers. I personally find the transformation story at Iron Mountain really interesting. If you're like me, you'll remember Iron Mountain as that company that used to come into your company's office to pick up stacks of paper to store away in their warehouses, right? They've been delivering storage and information management services for over 70 years, serving 95% of global 1,000 companies. However, to meet the changing needs of their customers, they've been on a journey to reinvent their offerings. Their new Inside Essential Edition on AWS is helping customers accelerate their journey from physical to digital at petabyte scale. They're using Amazon Textract to scan physical documents into digital, storing the digital content in S3 to allow their customers to easily search for critical business documents and improve their decision making. Their transformation is not only bringing more value to their customers, but it's allowing them to continue to grow. You know, as partners undergo transformations, these partners are making intentional decisions about where are they going to focus? What are they going to be great at? Or what other collaborations do I need in order for me to continue to scale my business? One key area of collaboration that we're seeing across our partners is around developing joint customer offerings. For example, we have AWS partners, Accenture and Databricks, who have jointly developed industry solutions starting with Lake House for Life Sciences, which is a modern data architecture that unifies life sciences data, analytics, and AI workloads to enable better patient outcomes at scale. What you see on the slide is just a small sample of all of the amazing collaborations that we're seeing across our partner network every single day. And the unique customer offerings that are born out of these collaborations show why the breadth and depth of the AWS partner network is so important for our customers. As customers undergo digital transformations, their needs are changing, and their needs are becoming more complex. They want access to more diverse set of partners who have specialized skills and unique offerings to help them. 
So at AWS, it's our job to make sure that these partners who have different capabilities, services, and products receive the right support that they need, support that is tailored to the way they want to differentiate and specialize with AWS. So to improve how we support our partners, we launched the first partner path at the beginning of this year. This path was for partners who had software offerings. The goal was to provide a simplified experience that allows our partners to easily navigate to a set of curated resources, programs, and benefits that are aligned to their business needs. Since the launch, the number of validated software offerings from partners have grown exponentially. And we've seen a lot of consulting partners who have software offerings leverage the new partner path to innovate and sell with AWS. You know, unfortunately for these consulting partners, prior to the partner path, they didn't have a programmatic way of engaging AWS on their software offerings. So this improvement was super important for them. Today, I am excited to announce that we are launching four new paths for partners that are aligned to the offerings delivered by partners to their customers. Partner Pass will not only simplify the engagement with AWS, but it will provide a tailored experience to our partners. And we're making it much easier for partners to engage on multiple paths that are relevant for their businesses. Lastly, we're making enhancements to Partner Central and APN Navigate to better support self-service to allow all of you to move at your own pace. We're really excited to see how our partners leverage the new paths to accelerate time to value when engaging AWS. For partners that provide consulting services, professional services, or MAS IT services, we expect them to choose the services path. To, and for those partners who choose the services path, an important milestone in their journey is achieving the premier tier status. We have 123 premier tier partners globally today. And these are partners who have differentiated themselves, who have consistently delivered great outcomes to their customers, and as a result, are accelerating and expanding their business with AWS. And today, I'm excited to recognize the 15 new premier tier partners who have achieved this important milestone in 2021. Congratulations to all of you. As I mentioned last year, more and more senior leaders of our partners are making multi-year commitments to transform with AWS. These are big commitments with specific transformation goals. And in return, AWS, we're making significant investments to these partners to help them transform faster and at scale. In 2020, we signed 25 strategic collaboration agreements, and this year we signed another 27 with partners like Halliburton, Fujitsu, Siemens, Swisscom, and Tech Mahindra. As you can see, we have a very diverse group of partners. You know, we have consulting partners, we have ISV partners, and we also have telco partners. These partners are already leveraging the SCAs to deliver great business outcomes for their customers and successfully growing their businesses with AWS. We love the results that we're seeing from these partners. I've shared a lot about how AWS partners are transforming to meet the changing needs of their customers. I'd like for all of us to now spend some time listening directly from a customer, talk about how AWS partners are helping them transform. I'm excited to have Shelly Swanback, president of product and platform at Western Union, speak to you about how AWS partners are helping them accelerate their digital transformation. And she'll share some learnings that they have had along the way in their transformation. Please join me in welcoming Shelly Swanback. Thank you, Doug, and uh, it's great to be here with everybody today. You know, just about two years ago, I joined Western Union to lead our digital transformation program. 
building on my experience at Accenture, where I created a business called Accenture Digital, designed to help companies across all industries envision and deliver growth through digital reinvention. But I didn't join Western Union just to lead the digital transformation program. I actually joined for an opportunity to help underserved communities across the world gain access to financial services. You know, 170 years ago, Western Union was best known for its telegram services. Today, we're best known for our money transfer services, enabling people and communities in literally every corner of the world with choice. Choice in terms of leveraging our vast digital and retail networks. But we're not stopping here. We have an ambitious business transformation program underway as we begin to extend beyond money transfer. And ambitious business transform transformation programs like we have underway require several things. Bold decisions, a commitment and culture of change, strong technology foundation, and of course, lots of great partners. That's one of the reasons we chose AWS, not just for their depth and breadth of service offerings, but for their know-how, for their passion, their commitment actually to help businesses transform and for their great network of partners that are available to help us with all the big changes that come through reinvention. Speaking of change, no organization can change everything at once. Yet at the same time, every business has to figure out how to manage and evolve that existing business while at the same time finding those breakthroughs to create the future all at once. And instinctively, people don't really like change. So as a leader, it can take an awful lot of energy to create new ways of working and new cultures that can really embrace change for meaningful results. So today, I'm gonna to share with you three lessons that I've learned in creating and leading organizations through change and through digital transformation. Embrace the mess, close the learning loops, and make your technology strategy your business strategy. You know, transformation, or shall I say reinvention, is hard, it's messy, it's complex. But if you can really learn to embrace that mess, you can harness it for very meaningful results. The first step is to create a team, a team of disruptors and balancers. This disruptor's always bringing a new idea, passion to move as fast as possible, always thinking of new ways of doing things. The balancers those who understand the gotchas and the complexities that must be considered along the way. And then as a leader, you must have a tremendous amount of patience and really, really great listening skills to allow enough time for healthy debate and to create an environment with just enough chaos to spark new ideas. It's usually the messiest conversations that create the biggest breakthroughs. So as a leader, you have to learn when is it time to step in and create the chaos versus maybe when it's time to step in and guide the chaos a bit. And you can't forget that organizations need time and practice at learning how to debate in healthy ways. And partners are critical, so don't forget to include them in thinking of your disruptors and your balancers as well. One way to engage with your partners in healthy debate and sparking new ideas is just to set aside that RFP and proposal process. And instead, engage with your partners in hands-on delivery sprints. It's a great way to learn how to work together and really understand what a partner can bring to the table. Let me just share a quick example. At Western Union, we decided we wanted to modernize our vast payment network so we could uh, open it up for new business models in the future. We didn't know exactly how we wanted to do this, but we knew we wanted to use the latest and greatest of everything on the market. So we engaged with two partners simultaneously in a hands-on discovery sprint. They each brought different ideas, different approaches, different architectures. Ultimately, we landed on an approach using elements from each partner. And we actually hired both partners to help us bring our payment hub vision to reality. But, Creating an environment for healthy debate and sparking new ideas isn't enough. You also need to create new mindsets, new routines for learning across your entire organization. One of my favorites and the simplest routines to create is to get in a habit of asking yourself and your teams, what have we learned and now how are we going to adjust? In the end, this is about closing learning loops as quickly and as effectively as you can including with your partners, by the way. So make sure you include them in those conversations about what have we learned and how are we going to adjust. 
Let me share another example. We made a bold decision to migrate our core transaction engine from the mainframe into the cloud. Quite an endeavor, given we, we operate 24 by 7 in literally every corner of the world, and we're refactoring over 7 million lines of code that has not been touched in decades. And our initial approach was kind of like an on-off switch. Data's in the cloud or it's on the mainframe. Unfortunately, that proved to be too risky in our first migration. Fortunately, our partner TCS and us had already established a relationship of continuous learning and continuous improvement. So they brought a better idea to the table, the idea of a smart router, where we could have data in the cloud and on the mainframe at the same time, allowing our new world and our old worlds to coexist. And AWS is playing a very important role for us in terms of closing our learning loops as we mature our cloud operations, as we move more and more of our technology to the cloud. I think we can probably all agree that every business today is enabled by technology, and probably every large established organization you talk to would tell you technology is their biggest enabler and also their biggest inhibitor. This is because technology is disrupting literally every industry in terms of the products and the experiences you can offer your customers, also in terms of the business models and cost structures in which you can create. This is why it's not good enough to modernize your technology to support your legacy business strategy. It's important to make your technology strategy your business strategy and critical to have a tech-savvy leadership team to support you. At Western Union, we have our fair share of legacy technology and the challenges that go with that. So just about a year ago, we decided we were going to launch a new product and improve our existing business all at the same time. We had a vision for a new kind of digital bank, one to offer borderless financial services to those who might otherwise be underserved. And working with AWS and partners like Deloitte, we are able to create and launch our digital bank in record time. I'm pleased to share that we're now in a controlled market launch in a couple of countries in Europe. And this is such an important, uh, uh, this milestone for us as a business. It, it's offering us new opportunities in the future in terms of business models that we might be able to move into. But it's actually even more than that, because we did this in a way but that we established a new technology foundation that's actually improving our existing business at the same time. And with the lessons that we've learned working with partners like Deloitte, we've also established a new cultural foundation in terms of learning how to work differently. And the best part is we're just getting started. So we have a lot of change and fun and reinvention ahead as we continue to reinvent how we connect the world and offer financial services to those who might otherwise be unserved. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you find success in embracing the mess, closing the learning loops, and making your technology strategy your business strategy. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. It's really inspiring to hear how Western Union is working with AWS partners not only on their technology transformation, but also driving business transformation. At AWS, when we talk about digital transformation, we focus on both technology and business. And that's because our customers are really focused on driving business outcomes, not just to deploy a new technology. McKinsey estimates that by 2030, more than $1 trillion of business value could be created across Fortune 500 companies by leveraging the cloud for digital transformation. $1 trillion. Helping companies capture this potential value could be the single biggest opportunity for AWS and all of you. These companies need help from all of us. I'd like to first spend, I'd like to spend time uh, first talking about technology transformation, uh, as that is normally a precursor to business transformation. We've always said the number one reason why customers choose to move to the cloud is the speed and agility that it provides them. However, we also know that there are still a lot of customers who deeply care about cost, not only the ongoing operations cost, but that initial migration cost. So over the years, we've invested significantly into go-to-market programs to reduce that initial migration cost for customers, making it easier for all of you to acquire new customers and accelerate your sales cycles. There's one program that has had a disproportionate impact on both customers and partners, 
and that is the Migration Acceleration Program that we launched in 2017. This program can be used by our partners to drive different types of large migrations with customers. Since the launch, we have continued to listen very carefully to all of you to make sure that this program is something that can help you scale your business. So based on your feedback, we introduced a change in 2020 to provide cash to partners across all three stages of the migration project. You know, this was a very important ask from all of you, but it was also a big investment for us to make. And, you know, but we always felt we got to do the right things for our partners, so we made this investment. And since the change, partners are helping customers migrate to AWS more and faster than ever before. Partners are telling us that it's making a huge difference to growing their business. Once customers start their migration journeys and expand their use of AWS, cost optimization is critical. That's why AWS is always looking to build new services to help partners so that the partners can leverage these new services to help customers optimize their costs. Take, for example, the Graviton2 processor that we launched at reInvent last year. EC2 instances powered by the Graviton2 processor provides up to 40% better price performance. And we have a huge demand from customers to use this right now. But when customers use Graviton2, they also need software products from partners to help with things like deployment, integration, monitoring, and securing their workloads. They want software that is optimized for Graviton and provides feature parity to the x86-based version of that software. So I'm pleased to announce our new AWS Graviton Ready program. This program validates software from our partners to ensure our customers have a consistent experience using that software on Graviton as they do on other instances. And the program makes it much easier for customers to discover software products that they can use to accelerate their adoption of Graviton. And this is really important because it helps them realize cost savings sooner. Partners like Dynatrace, Lacework, Circle CI, and Trim Micro, they're already leveraging Graviton to help their customers. And you know, based on my personal experience, optimizing costs for your customers is one of the best ways to earn their trust. So if you have a software offering, I highly encourage you to leverage this program to help your customers. We've also said all along that customers and partners, they need the right tools to do the jobs that they need to do, and do those jobs better and faster. That's why the breadth and depth of AWS services is so critical. For example, we believe it's important to provide partners with the right tools to simplify and accelerate migrations for customers by reducing any blockers customers may have as they consider moving to the cloud. One of the challenges customers have is deciding what to do with their existing technology investments. We all know that customers have invested a lot over the years in building custom applications on top of their existing technology stack. So to make the migration decision easier for customers, we've been working very closely with the leading enterprise software companies like VMware, NetApp, and Red Hat to build fully managed services on AWS of their software products. By using these services, migrating applications becomes much easier because you don't have to do a lot of modifications to it. Partners can use these services to not only simplify migrations, but more importantly, open up new opportunities to engage your customers. While migrating application, the e existing applications to the cloud is an important step, it's not the end state of technology transformation. Customers want to modernize their applications as they migrate to AWS. And not just the easy applications, they want to modernize all of their applications. For example, more and more customers want to modernize their mainframe applications. You just heard Western Union going through that process with one of our partners. 
you know, most of these applications still run in data centers. They aren't able to provide the elasticity nor the other agile benefits needed by modern applications. We have lots of customers who are looking for partners to help them with this modernization. And that is why we expanded the migration competency program earlier this year to include mainframe migration partners, both SIs and ISVs, to make it easier for our customers to find and work with partners that have been validated by AWS. And to further help partners with their projects, we recently acquired Blue Age, which provides an automated refactoring technology that simplifies mainframe migrations and modernizations. I encourage all of you to leverage Blue Age's technology as well as their professional experts who can help accelerate the delivery of those projects. All of the programs and services that I've just shared, these are really important accelerators that all of you should be using to drive technology transformation with your customers. Once customers have modernized their technology platform and reduced their technical debt, they're in a much better position to drive business transformation. For business transformation, customers are asking AWS and AWS partners for innovative technologies for things like transforming customer experiences or improving operational efficiency or enhancing the overall business agility. I'd like to share one interesting example where AWS partners are helping businesses transform customer experiences. Across all industries, we're seeing more and more customers looking to interact with businesses using digital channels. So in response, companies of all sizes are developing conversational AI interfaces like chatbots, voice assistants, and IVR solutions to provide a better way for customers to engage them. The use of conversation AI, by the way, it's not limited to just customer service. It goes beyond that to other use cases across industries. For example, you know, making an airline reservation or transferring money or even triaging medical symptoms. However, implementing conversational AI solutions, leveraging sophisticated natural language understanding, it's complex and it's an iterative process. So fortunately for our customers, we have AWS partners who have that necessary expertise to help. We've been working very closely with seven partners to combine their domain expertise with AWS AI ML services to develop new conversational AI partner offerings. One offering that I'd like to highlight today is Parley, which is a customer interaction platform developed by Cat Ion Consulting. Parley is built natively on AWS, using more than 40 different AWS services, including AI ML services like Amazon SageMaker or Amazon Comprehend and Amazon TextTrack. CatION used Parley to build out a new chatbot service for 123.ie, which is an insurance provider based in Ireland. One of the things that the customers can do with this chatbot is to upload a photo of their previous insurance policy, and the chatbot will analyze that photo, extract the relevant information, and use that information as a starting point for building out a new insurance policy. The chatbot reduces manual work by 80% and brought down the policy processing time under three minutes. This is a great example of how conversational AI solution can solve real world problems. And you know, for me, the possibilities are endless here. And that's why we want to work with more partners to go after this really important opportunity together. We believe customers who are looking to accelerate their business transformation share three common needs. They want to buy industry-ready solutions rather than having to build them from scratch. They want partners with deep industry and functional expertise to take those innovative technology solutions to modernize their business processes. And they want hands-on workforce training and change management support to ensure they're able to get the most out of their technology investments. While all three needs are super important, I'd like to take some time and talk about change management because I believe this is an area that just hasn't received enough focus from all of us. 
I thought Christina Burns at Slalom explained very well why change management is so important. When you introduce a new technology into your organization, you have to help people adopt new ways of working. And you know, we have so many AWS customers right now who are going through massive digital transformations and they need help from our partners to help with change management. However, change management isn't something that all partners have the necessary deep experience and expertise in. That's why I think this is a great opportunity for our partners to collaborate and develop a better together offering for our customers. We have partners like Accenture, Deloitte, and Slalom who have experience with change management. And Accenture specifically have recently worked very closely with AWS Procer to build out a new offering called Change Acceleration for AWS. I know that these partners would be really excited to collaborate with all of you. So for me, you know, I would love to see all of us put more focus on this going forward because this is super important for our customers. I believe all of you, all of you can expand your business by putting more focus on business transformation offerings. And AWS will help. We have both the technical and business resources to work with you to architect and build out those offerings. And once they're developed, we will leverage the AWS sales and marketing organization to drive adoption. And we, we will also leverage AWS Marketplace to distribute these offerings. 310,000 active customers are currently using software from AWS Marketplace. It's becoming an important enabler of digital transformation. To provide more details on how Marketplace can help all of you engage your customers more effectively, I'd like to invite our leader for AWS Marketplace, Stephen Orban, to stage. Good afternoon, Las Vegas. It is awesome to be here with all of you this afternoon. And thank you as well to all of you tuning in on the live stream. I know it's been a tough few years for many of us, and I hope you, your family, and your loved ones are healthy and staying safe. I can only speak for myself in saying that I am thrilled to be here meeting many of you and learning from all of the awesome innovation that you're driving all around the world. Now, I've been very fortunate in that I've spent the last seven years helping customers transform while at AWS, before which I was the CIO of Dow Jones, where I had the opportunity to work with some of the brightest minds in both financial services and media as we transformed the way Dow Jones did their business using modern technology. And if it's one thing that I've learned over the last couple of, uh, the, over the last decade, it's that organizations of all shapes and sizes need to think about how they go about their work differently and make innovation a part of their ongoing DNA if they're going to remain competitive in today's environment. And I don't mean by funding one or two R&D projects off to the side to say that they're doing digital transformation. I mean by training and enabling their teams to use the best tools that help unleash the best ideas that are likely already nestled inside the minds of their employees. And we recognize that large governments and enterprises across all business segments have hundreds, if not thousands, of partners that they work with, that they want to continue to work with as they transform. And we want to continue to help those partners grow their business as well. We've learned that our collective customers want to be able to govern who spends what with whom, be able to buy in a self-service e-commerce fashion, and privately negotiate larger contracts, consolidate spending onto fewer invoices, and do so all from a catalog of solutions that they can trust. These are the needs that we worked backwards from to build AWS Marketplace over the last 10 years. Delivering what customers tell us is helping them transform their digital supply chains worldwide. And what partners are telling us is helping them migrate and capture customers as they move to the cloud. Goldman Sachs, Samsung, Thomson Reuters, 
Merck, Bank United, and Ellie Mae are, among, are just a few of some of the more than 325,000 customers worldwide who are using AWS Marketplace to find, subscribe to, deploy, and govern software, data, containers, machine learning models, and professional services from more than 2,000 sellers. And we feel very fortunate that we've been able to innovate more capabilities for customers and for partners faster than anybody else, largely because we've had the opportunity to learn from more customers using AWS for increasingly sophisticated workloads every single day. To put that into perspective, we were the first cloud infrastructure provider to launch a marketplace in 2012, which gave customers self-service access to Amazon machine instances running popular open source packaged and operating system software for them to build upon. In 2014, we were the first cloud infrastructure marketplace to launch annual subscriptions, which allowed buyers to commit to a year of usage at a discounted rate and help set the stage for customers to bring some of their larger purchases to mar Marketplace. Then in 2015, we launched service catalog and cloud formation support, which allowed customers to automate the deployment of solutions comprising of multiple instances or that needed to configure other parts of their AWS environment and then share these solutions in a well-governed way across their teams. In 2016, we launched the ability for SaaS partners to list and price their software by number of users or hosts, the amount of data scanned, or any other dimension that suits their business model. SaaS continues to be an outperforming category for us, with customers increasingly preferring SaaS over, to having, over having to manage their own deployments in their own environments. Now, it was also around this time that customers told us that our e-commerce capabilities were great for smaller workloads, but when it came to production workloads or as they wanted to migrate their existing partner relationships to help them with larger migrations, they needed a way to custom negotiate pricing and terms with you. So in 2017, we were the first cloud infrastructure marketplace to launch private offers, which allowed customers to pay a privately negotiated rate that they negotiated with their partners. But then customers told us that they often negotiate these contracts with resellers, distributors, or managed service providers. So in 2018, we were the first cloud infrastructure marketplace to launch channel partner private offers. So customers could transact using the channel partner of their choice while we continued to handle the collection and the disbursement. Also in 2018, we launched the ability for customers to vend machine learning models and containers, which we've got some new innovation to talk about in just a moment. And then in 2019, customers told us that they wanted to have the same experience they have buying software apply to the way that they license data. So we launched AWS Data Exchange, where we've also got some new innovation to share with you in a moment. And last year, Customers told us that they wanted help from consulting partners to integrate complex software into their environment. So we launched professional services offerings so customers can now bundle professional services in with their software contracts. With the most comprehensive set of procurement options, product types, and capabilities among any cloud infrastructure marketplace, it's no wonder that there are so many customers and sellers using AWS Marketplace with so much more innovation still to come. We work with more than 2,000 sellers who have listed more than 12,000 offerings that more than 325,000 customers buy either direct or from one of the more than 1,000 consulting partners of their choice. And when you sum all of this up, we've seen billions of dollars in products and services sold through AWS Marketplace this year alone, with more and more contracts worth millions of dollars as customers migrate some of their most strategic relationships with many of you to the cloud. And it's not just new workloads, with many of our partners telling us that they're able to land and expand larger contracts 
when co-selling with AWS. And we love working with so many of you. We partner with security software solutions from CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, and Trend Micro, storage solutions from Druva, NetApp, and Commvault, industry-leading networking from Cisco, F5, and Citrix, data and analytics tools from Databricks, MongoDB, and Snowflake, monitoring from Splunk, New Relic, AppDynamics, and Datadog, DevOps tools from PagerDuty and HashiCorp, and business intelligence tools from Tableau and Matillion. And then as you move up the stack to horizontal business software, we have contact center solutions from Genesis, Vonage, and OpenText, cost optimization from Aptio, CloudHealth, and CloudChecker, AdTech and MarTech solutions from Twilio, Acquia, and Amparity, training and education capabilities from A Cloud Guru, Coursera, and Blackboard, business workflows from Adobe, Infor, and Sage, and we're super excited to have recently launched Zoom alongside other collaboration tools like Smartsheet, Freshworks, and Zendesk. And we're increasingly helping customers with their industry-specific workloads for line of business buyers also. Change Healthcare and Emergent Connect have solutions for healthcare professionals. Perkin Elmer and Illumina have solutions for pharma companies and life sciences. Experian, Highland, and PayShield offer financial services solutions. Grabio and Teradisi and Media and Entertainment. Bosch and Rubicon have industrial supply chain management systems. And Ambient, AutoGrid, and Blueware Energy have, have energy and sustainability capabilities available as well. And with selection and capabilities this broad, it's not surprising that we're helping you break into all of the different buying centers within a typical large enterprise. It often starts with the builders who are laying the foundation for a large migration. Or it may start with the line of business looking to acquire a fit-for-purpose SaaS solution. And it, or it could be security-driven with many partners helping our customers keep their IT environment safe, safe. And as contracts become both more in number and more in value, we're working with the procurement, legal, and finance teams to drive large-scale procurement transformation by integrating our service management and procurement system connectors to better govern spend across the enterprise. And starting in 2019, we're facing off with more and more chief data officers who are looking across the enterprise on how they manage and onboard their data spends. And to that end, we launched AWS Data Exchange in 2019 to make it easier for our customers to license data with each other. And with, uh, we now partner with more than 200 data providers, covering healthcare and life sciences related data from IBM, Kyogen, and IHME, financial services data from FactSet, TradeWeb, and CoreLogic, location data from Foursquare, Kochava, and SafeGraph, media content from IMDB and Stats Perform and Reuters, consumer insights from Equifax, Experian, and Epsilon. And personally, I'm really excited that more and more customers are investing in understanding sustainability and their environmental impact by using data from vendors like SASB, Verisk, and Arabesque to do so. Arabesque has grown their client portfolio 27% since joining AWS Data Exchange, and Foursquare has tripled their AWS Data Exchange revenue in the last year and is looking to do the same with new offerings next year as well. Now, our initial launch made it easy for data providers to package the data they're licensing into file-based data sets that they could update as they see fit. Customers who subscribe to these data sets received a notification every time the provider updated their data, and they could automatically copy those files into their own databases, ETL them into running an analytics job, or retraining a machine learning model, which we're seeing with companies like Yum Brands, who's integrating data from Foursquare into the analytics that they run on AWS to optimize the placement of Taco Bell and KFC locations based on local foot traffic and buying behavior. Now, this works great in cases where customers need the entire data set and all of its history. But customers also told us that they wanted the ability 
to query only the data that they needed without having to ETL files every time there was an update. So we're super excited to announce two new capabilities to make this possible. The first is AWS Data Exchange for Amazon Redshift, which launched in preview a few weeks ago and will be generally available soon. This brings AWS Data Exchange and Amazon Redshift together so that customers can find, subscribe to, and immediately query data from dozens of data providers operating on the same copy in Amazon Redshift without having to ETL or do any data pipelining. A few of our launch partners include FactSet's global supply chain and corporate governance data, Revilio Labs has workforce data showing hiring and attrition trends at millions of employers globally, and Factius's daily transaction data so customers can analyze the revenue mix at thousands of US retailers. But we didn't stop there. We also heard that customers wanted to be able to access data one API call at a time and be able to consistently govern those API calls the same way that they govern their AWS APIs. So starting today, we're super excited to announce the launch of AWS Data Exchange for APIs. This allows our partners to bring their existing APIs to AWS Data Exchange so customers can subscribe to them and start calling them using supported AWS SDKs and the governance that they've come to expect from any AWS API using services like IAM and CloudTrail. This launch removes the need for customers to do any bespoke API integrations because they can now call their partner API APIs the same way that they call any AWS service, giving customers more data from more vendors in more formats. And for data providers, this allows them to reach the millions of builders already on AWS that are comfortable using our APIs with dozens of free and contract-based APIs available today. Come check out the data we have on movies and entertainment from IMDb, finance data from FactSet, location data from Foursquare, and reach out to your team through your PDM if you're interested in vending your APIs as well. Now, some of you may recall, or even participated in, our launch of AWS Marketplace for Containers in 2018. This gave customers the ability to run third-party software in their AWS managed container environments from dozens of their most strategic software vendors, including Fortinet, NetApp, Datadog, Aqua, Trend Micro, Citrix, and more. And while this capability was great for customers who ran their container environments using Amazon EKS, ECS, or AWS Fargate, we also have a lot of customers who self-manage their own Kubernetes environments, either on AWS or on-premises or atop of another Kubernetes platform. So starting today, we're super excited to announce the launch of AWS Marketplace for Containers Anywhere. which extends our support for new container offerings that can be deployed to any Kubernetes environment with just a few simple commands. This means our partners can now offer containerized software that is deployable to the EKS Anywhere, Red Hat OpenShift, VMware Tanzu, Rancher, or self-managed Kubernetes running on EC2 or on-premises. Altogether, this continues to make AWS Marketplace more of a one-stop shop for customers who want to consume software in all kinds of environments and offers our partners yet another way to reach your customers with your leading software. And here's just a few of the ISVs who are listing containers that can be run anywhere from AWS Marketplace. Palo Alto Network's CN series is the first available containerized firewall with best-in-class Layer 7 runtime protection for containerized workloads in minutes. The Kasdan K10 by Veeam is a data management platform purpose-built for Kubernetes 
that provides enterprises backup restore, disaster recovery, and mobility of their container applications. And Cisco, CrowdStrike, and others will have their best-in-class containerized offerings available for customers shortly as well. Switching gears a little bit to how we help our customers find the right management and governance tools from all of you, we recently launched a new version of the management and government governance lens. This lens provides customers with a framework to set up their AWS environment with good governance from the very start so that they can manage, scale, and operate a secure and cost-effective cloud environment. And here, once again, we recognize that customers want to use best-in-class vendor solutions when setting up their cloud environments. So the lens includes ISVs that can help customers meet the needs of each of these perspectives, all of whom are available in AWS Marketplace, and many of which are deployable directly to AWS Control Tower, which many large enterprises are now using to set up the automation of their landing zones so that they can safely and confidently migrate to the cloud. These built-on Control Tower offerings help customers achieve the management and governance posture that they're looking for and brings together the automation of AWS Control Tower with AWS Marketplace so customers can find the right tool for the right job from the right vendor at the right time in their cloud journey. These offerings are included with bundled professional services offerings, occasionally on Marketplace, such as Accenture and Palo Alto, who are partnering to bring managed firewalls for our customers. IPSense helps customers de deploy effective controls, IAM permissions, and network connectivity in partnership with F5. And IBEX Labs offers a cloud hosting accelerator with solutions like Datadog, New Relic, and Fortinet to establish security best practices on AWS. Software AG recently told us that the combination of these capabilities helped them realize a 50% cost savings compared to their traditional procurement motions. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd take a 50% cost improvement in any part of my business any day of the week. And we're delighted to help customers like Software AG with the kind of supply chain transformation that's driving innovation with good governance and reducing costs at the same time. To wrap up with a little bit on giving back, I wanted to take just a minute to acknowledge some of the work that we're doing to help underprivileged communities get educated on and start careers with the cloud. AWS Restart is a full-time skills development and training program that prepares underemployed individuals for careers in the cloud at no cost and also connects them to potential employers. This program is supported by funding from AWS, the government, and recruitment fees called Pay It Forward fees that the employers pay collaborating organizations when they successfully place a new graduate. These collaborating organizations are using AWS Marketplace to invoice the pay it forward fees, which are conveniently billed to the customer's AWS invoice and paid in full to the collaborating organization. I'm pretty excited about this program and just delighted that we have the opportunity to impact people's lives, their communities, and help customers close the skills gap at the same time. I really appreciate everybody's time today. I'm super excited to keep growing our businesses together. For any partners that I haven't met yet and want to say hi, I'll be in the Marketplace booth at the Expo Hall from 5 to 6 today, signing copies of my book, Ahead in the Cloud, for anybody who wants to stop by. Thanks again. It's great to see all of you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks, Stephen. Really exciting to see the progress that we're making with AWS Marketplace for our customers and partners. So I have a question for all of you. Do you know what today is? It's Cyber Monday. So 
you know, I have three daughters at home, so if you're like me, holiday shopping is on your mind this time of year. It wasn't too long ago when we used to see news stories in the U.S. about people lining up outside of major retailers at midnight trying to get the best deal. Well, today the, the shopping experience has been completely reinvented, and we now have one long weekend of online holiday shopping. This reinvention has been accelerating over the last several years to provide consumers with more options to shop more conveniently. We're seeing companies across all industries reinventing themselves. And to share how they're doing that with our partners, please join me in welcoming Sandy Carter to the stage. Well, it's so great to see you guys here in Vegas. And thank you, Doug, for that great introduction. Are you guys happy to be here? Okay. We are going to take up the energy in the room a little bit because we are excited to be here in person. And I am so excited to see the impact of all our partners and industries every day. Now, I travel a lot as part of my job, and I'm sure that you guys do too. And I love meeting with my customers in person, especially right now. And I've had the opportunity to travel to 87 different countries around the world. And I'll tell you a secret. I've eaten in McDonald's in every single one of them. Now you're probably thinking, how does she know that? Well, in a parent day that I had at my daughter's school, I was talking about what I did for a living, and nobody got it, nobody understood, until I said, I have eaten in 87 countries McDonald's. My Twitter handle actually could be Big Mac Mama. Now, what I love about McDonald's, other than the french fries, of course, is that they're constantly rethinking the customer experience. They're working with AWS and our partners to make things better, faster, and more personalized for their billions of customers around the world. And today, customers like McDonald's want more than just technical expertise. They need industry expertise as well. So that's why partners around the world are developing that industry specialization. And those that have that specialization are winning the most advanced, most exciting, most cutting edge projects in the world. And we want to help you build, market, and sell those solutions to customers from every industry globally. And to make it easier for you to sell those solutions, we've done things like AWS for Health, AWS for Media and Entertainment, AWS for Industrial. But we're not going to start there. And that's why we've made a big commitment to you, our partners, to differentiate you in industry. So working backwards from our customer, that's a big thing here at AWS. We want to make sure that it's easy for a customer to find the right partner. And the right partner, according to our customers, is one that not only has the right technology skill set, but that also has the right industry skills and has the unique requirements that they need for transformation. So today, I'm going to talk to you about three things. One, how you can differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Two, some great new partner programs. And three, I'm going to share some announcements with you. Now, I heard you guys clapping before, and the two gentlemen, both Doug and Steve and I, have a bet. And I bet that my announcements are going to get the biggest rounds of applause. So can you guys help me with that? Let's just practice. Can you give me a big round of applause? There you go. Thank you. OK, so let's get started. We're going to start first with our partner solution finder. Now, this really meets the needs that our customers told us 
that they need to find you fast. And we make it easy for millions of active customers to connect with you. AWS partners have that specialized designation, proven industry expertise, and customer success. So let me show you a real example. So last week, I was working with a customer, and they gave me this example. They were working with someone, they wanted to work with a partner who had strong SAP skill set. So they went to the Solution Finder tool, and for Europe, IBM popped up as a core partner with strong and validated SAP experience. So if you haven't updated that Solution Finder tool in a while, make sure that you do that today. Now, working backwards from what you have told me in over 400 partner meetings I've had this year, you told me that you want more go-to-market support. You really want to expand your customer base. And there's thousands of new customers here for you. That's why I love reInvent. You also wanted to make sure that you improve your visibility and your point of view. So for example, in our latest program for data-led migration in government, we featured Smarttronics, who was really driving data with our customers. And also, we know that you want to use and leverage that marketing development set of funding in a really strong way. And we want to help you make the most of that funding as well. So now one of my very favorite programs that we like to talk about is our competencies. And why do I really like the competencies? Well, it enables a customer to know immediately what your area of expertise is. And with customers looking for more than just that use case and technology and industry, it's even more important. So let me give you an example of where a competency played a really key role. So Hurricane Ida struck as a Category 4 storm back in August of 2021. And it caused a devastating and deadly flooding situation in New Jersey. And in fact, the state of New Jersey needed help. And they went and they looked for a public safety and disaster response competency partner. And they found Maxar. I just want to show you some pictures of this, what this looked like. So this was the baseball stadium before the hurricane. And this was the baseball stadium after the hurricane. Leveraging Maxar's open data platform, they were able to share this before and after high resolution satellite imagery with the affected areas, enabling those early respondents to assist much faster. And that's just one example of how a competency can connect the power of a partner with a customer. Now, we have over 10 industry competencies today, and we prioritize these competencies based on what our customers want. Again, working backwards for the customer. And one of the biggest industries undergoing major transformation is energy. So if you think about energy, energy is transforming in many ways and impacting all of us today. They're really helping a lot of customers because they're helping us with renewables, they're helping us with lower carbon footprints and sustainability. So that's why last year, standing on a virtual stage, I got to pre-announce the energy competency. And here's where you're going to help me. And so today, I would like to announce that the energy competency is now generally availability. Congratulations to the 32 partners who have already achieved this competency. So through this energy competency, customers will now have access to these highly specialized partners for their digital transformation in the energy space. And a story I love is Frego. Frego is one of the partners who just got the energy competency, and they're using sonar technology and Amazon SageMaker to map the sea floors so that customers can find the best sites for installing turbines some pretty incredible partners that we have. Now let's go back to working backwards from our customer again. And customers told us that they need a way to find a partner that is committed to low carbon future, usually known as ESG, or Environmental, Societal, and Governance. 
And what they're looking for is how can they score us as AWS as well as our partners before they decide to work with us. And one of those ways is through our AWS data exchange. So you heard Steve talk about this earlier. Um, the data exchange here makes it really easy for customers to use data to inform and to guide their transition to a low carbon energy future. So for example, ESG scores from Amenity Analytics is used to analyze and benchmark carbon emissions, waste management, and ESG performance of companies within your supply chain. So those energy partners can reduce their own emissions. So for example, Catalyst is using this to detect methane leaks. Virus is using it to do the optimal placement of their renewable energy as well. I love our commitment to sustainability because it really impacts us and all the future generations too. And so as we reach new net zero targets in the coming decades, it's really going to be clear and important that these industry requirements are going to drive customer decisions. So all of us need to pay attention to this. So now let's look back from our customers once again to look at another requirement that they always talk to us about. So I need a partner who understands not only my industry, but also my security, my compliance, and the needs that I have to meet those requirements in the marketplace. And that's why in 2018, we introduced a program called ATO, the Authority to Operate Program. Now this helps partners through templating and best practices determine what they need to reach a certain compliance level. So for instance, in government, FedRAMP, financial services, PCI, Europe, GDPR, HIPAA for healthcare, and the list goes on. This ATO part program not only helps you get there faster and reduce your cost, but it also enables you to go to market with us in a stronger fashion as well. So one of the things that we've been doing, working with you, our partners, is to ensure that we've got FedRAMP solutions. And boy, do we have some great FedRAMP solutions from you, our partners, today. Today, AWS has four times the partner-held FedRAMP authorized solution. This is crucial for our government customers who require these FedRAMP solutions, providing more options to them on the solutions that they choose. And today, I am really excited to announce that we also leverage that ATO program to help our partners become aisle five. Okay, let's try that again. We've got five more partners that are now aisle five. There you go. Now this is a FedRAMP high authorization and it allows for them to now handle controlled, unclassified information for our government partners. It's a really big deal. These five partners, Diligent, General Dynamics, PTC, Splunk, Zscaler, all got IL-5 this year, 2021, joining Palantir, who achieved IL-5 last year. Congratulations to all of you. Okay, now governments are becoming hubs of innovation. Now, hopefully you saw that during COVID and they have to balance moving really fast with security. So they're looking to AWS and our partners to help them innovate while adhering to those security standards. Now, I don't know if you knew this. Did you know that our largest competency in AWS is our government competency? And we're gonna to continue to innovate on new programs to grow the government business because there is a lot of opportunity out there for us to help our nations around the world digitally transform. Now, a great example of this is a company and a partner that I love to work with, which is IronNet. Now, IronNet and their mission is to develop the most advanced cybersecurity solutions to defend industries and nations against cyber attacks. Now, I love what they've done with the New York State Power Dome. So they do iron domes. 
They provide for the collective defense of cybersecurity for the New York Port Authority and over 51 municipal and co-op buyers. It is really their first of a kind New York State power dome protecting that area of the country against cybersecurity crimes using both AWS as well as our AI and ML services. Now another really hot area of opportunity inside of the government is operations and maintenance, commonly referred to as O&M. Now O&M is not just a billion dollar industry, but it really provides critical data that helps impact how we take care of our durable assets like airplanes and ships and even ground vehicles as well. So AWS has been collaborating with our partners on O&M. For example, partners like Uncommon. They're using data to improve the supply chain and resilience. Partners like C3.ai and Pavcon, who are keeping military aircraft mission ready with predictive maintenance. And Lidos, who is modernizing the digital data warehouse and logistics. And they were just announced today as the US Public Sector Consulting Partner of the Year. Congratulations to Lidos. Now, there's another amazing group of partners that's making a huge business, business impact today, and that is our small businesses. And I know many of you are small businesses as well. And that's why, ready? I'm getting ready to announce AWS Think Big for Small Business Communities. Now, if you remember, in our virtual reInvent last year, we announced small business Think big for small business, and it really helped diverse partners get extra technology and go-to-market help. And the government depends on these diverse partners. We now have over 200 partners in the program. But working backwards from our partners, they were also getting value from meeting with each other, collaborating. And that's where our partner community idea came from, from partners like Bell Floor and DZLP, both female-founded, diverse companies. So today, as we announce Think Big for Small Big Business Communities, we connect these groups and peer-to-peer -peer networking areas and collaboration. And we're going to expand this to all areas across the world as well. These small businesses really matter. Now, these stories are not just isolated to government. They're also included in our healthcare space. So while government is our largest competency, healthcare is our fastest growing competency. Now obviously, because of what's happening with COVID, this is a crucial industry. We have over 16 different areas for solutions in healthcare today. So we're gonna continue to build programs to support our healthcare partners. So for example, we've got our healthcare competency where we have over 40 partners today. We also have our healthcare marketplace where customers can go and find healthcare solutions. And we announced our healthcare accelerator for the next generation partners. GitLab was one of those partners and they were just named one of Time's most innovative companies of 2021. So I have a great story to tell you because I was just working with one of our great healthcare innovators and he reached out to me this weekend, and that is Axel 3D. Roger is their CEO, and they have an exclusive SaaS, or segmentation as a service offering. It has scalability, agility, and security for the healthcare space. Now, this is a really interesting part. So you guys probably measure ROI, right? Return on investment. Well, he measures ROL return on life. Their surgeons, their, I'm sorry, their solution helps surgeons save lives using detailed preoperative 3D modeling. So they create and deliver these in days, not weeks, increasing that ROL metric or return on life. Now healthcare is really changing right now. A digitization, the 
say that three times, right? Digitization uh, is really driving healthcare. And it's led by our electronic health records and how that has positively impacted the workflow of our healthcare professionals. So because these EHR systems are critical, that's why today our next announcement is an EHR initiative to help with integrated application migrations. Now this is really exciting because it's a programmatic way to help securely migrate any EHR workload over to AWS. We use tools like MAP and technical SMEs and we're targeting over 500 EHR workloads from our ISV community. So if you're interested in this, make sure that you reach out to us and let us know as well. Now, I don't know, do you guys know the biggest healthcare provider that's out there today is Epic. Epic is a global leader in healthcare. Customers can now not only take advantage of their application, but also the power of the cloud and that great partner community that's been built around Epic. So organizations now can focus less on figuring out how to manage their data center and really focus in on patient care as well. And with the newly announced EC2 instance, the M6i, I'm really excited to announce today that Epic has just texted, texted its application on the M6i and look at these results. Now this deserves a really round of applause. 40% faster performance with the new EC2 M6i. It supports over 90% of all the Epic deployments and there's a 30% improvement in the total cost of ownership. So that means that any ISV that runs on top of Epic will see these performance improvements and any system integrator we'll see these strong improvements in total cost of ownership. This really is a game changer. Okay, our last industry that we're gonna talk about today is around telecommunications. Um, telecommunications has also got a lot of disruption going on and it's being impacted, we all are, by innovative new applications and new services like 5G. Now, I have had the opportunity to work with Amdocs uh, recently, and Amdocs is one of those partners who's really helping to transform the industry. And so what we wanted to have happen is instead of me telling you about how our partners are helping, is to bring up one of our amazing customers and a fellow woman in tech, Meg Noth, who is the VP of Business Applications for T-Mobile. Please welcome her with a real warm round of applause. Meg? Thank you, Sandy, for that warm welcome. And speaking of disruptors, I'm here to talk about T-Mobile, the uncarrier. Woohoo! So what does being an uncarrier mean? Fundamentally, it means that we love our customers and we will stop at nothing to give them the absolute best customer experience they can possibly have with us. Every single day we're innovating to bring them more capabilities, more features, and just to flat out delight them. What I would love to do more than anything else is paint you all in magenta right now and give you the opportunity to live a day in the life of the uncarrier. But since I can't do that, I came up with the next best option. What's playing behind me is literally a clap-in at one of our call centers. So your eyes are not deceiving you. We are literally shooting off confetti cannons. We have slapsticks. We have people cheering their brains out laughing, smiling, woohooing, and fundamentally making every single guest to our call center feel like a rock star. Because frankly, who doesn't want to feel like a rock star, right? So why the heck do we go through this whole production? We do it for two reasons. First of all, because we want our guests to feel like rock stars. But more importantly, 
We want to remind our employees what it takes to make each customer feel like a rock star. And that's what we want that experience with our customers to be. We want them to feel like rock stars every time they engage with us. It can't stop with our care and sales reps, however. One of the things that T-Mobile has learned is that we have to embrace Uncarrier within the entire company, including technology. So what does that look like to embrace Uncarrier and technology? That sounds kind of strange. What it fundamentally means is we have to completely change the way that we were doing work and we have to go with a no boundaries concept. So just because we didn't explore it before, just because we didn't try it before, doesn't mean we can't try it now. So we're looking for those bold, bodacious ideas. And one of the areas that we decided to tackle was actually our BSS system. So who, most people are terribly afraid of going after billing and other monolithic systems. We're not. And the first call we made was to one of our key partners, Amdocs, who's a leader in telecommunications software, hardware, in both um, IT as well as in network systems. And we said, hey, come sit down with us and let's talk. Where are you fundamentally putting your investments and where, where do you see the industry going and, and what, what does your roadmap look like? And they said, sure, we'd love to sit down with you, but can we bring a friend with? And we're like, uh, who? And they said, well, AWS, of course, because the key to our success with our product strategy around Digital One is that it's born from the cloud. It's digitally native, and it, it's critical that it be that way so that we have the scalability, the resiliency, the security, and the blue-green deployments, Meg, that you need to delight your customers. So we all got together, and then one of the first things we did and by the way, these are eye charts, so there's no quiz after this. I don't expect you to memorize it. My point in sharing them is to say, when we first sat down, we looked at the combined roadmaps. And we said, hey, where is each of us putting our money? Because part of the secret is we don't need to spend money where our suppliers already are. We need to learn how to harness that and leverage it and add our secret sauce around it to go farther faster. So we compared our roadmaps, and we literally put them out on the table together and said, hey, how do we maximize this and do more together as a group? So what does this look like in a day in the life? It starts with a problem statement. So it starts with what are we trying to solve from a business standpoint? So a, a micro example of what we've been doing at T-Mobile is to say, hey, we need to wow our enterprise customers the same way that we wow our consumers today. So these enterprise customers have thousands of nodes, incredible complexity in the rating that we perform for them. And we challenged Amdocs to say, we want to do this on demand. We want to do this near real time. What's that going to take? And they said, hey, let's bring AWS into the conversation. And we all three together decided that to maximize our ability to wow these customers, we needed to leverage some key services like Amazon Aurora, Elastic Kubernetes Service, and managed streaming for Apache Kafka to power the Amdocs products to delight these customers. The biggest learning we've had, however, has nothing to do with technology. It has to do with being vulnerable. We learned very early on that if we weren't open with Amdocs and AWS about the challenges we were facing, they weren't open back. So what I would challenge each of you to do is to be really open in describing what success looks like for you and what you're scared of. Because what that does to your partners is it says, hey, it's OK to be open with me back. And it's OK to say crazy, bodacious things. Because guess what? Particularly if you're working with someone like T-Mobile, we want the crazy stuff. We want the off-the-wall ideas. Because that's where the gems come from. And those gems are the next big on carrier move. And those are where we make history, frankly. So be vulnerable, be open, and look for those on carrier moves in your own companies.
The other group we need to be uncarrier with is our people, our teams. Many of you in this room may have at one point in time thought, what does this cloud journey mean for me and my career, my team, my current application? And if you're not thinking it, the teams back home probably are. We realized that our teams were feeling it and thinking it, and we said, hey, we need to take everyone along on the journey. So how do we create a really inclusive environment where everyone is on the team and feels like they can contribute? And it came down to three really big things. The first one was showing up as a team. So believe it or not, the pictures behind you are actually Amdocs employees wearing T-Mobile t-shirts. That's one way that we signify team. Another key thing is investing in training for everyone. And a lot of it's through conferences like this, but it's also through on-demand training, meeting employees where they are and what they need to learn for their own career growth, as well as for the team's growth at that particular moment. Because that's really where the sweet spot is, is in that win-win. So last but not least, let me leave you with this. To live truly uncarrier and to live uncarrier in technology and find those crazy moves, we follow a simple motto. And I want to leave you with that motto. No surprises, no excuses, and absolutely, no matter what you do, no boundaries. And my wish for all of you at this conference is to live boundaryless and explore the heck out of all the cool things that AWS is sharing with us this week, and then take them back and create amazing customer experiences for your customers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Meg. It's great to see T-Mobile and Amdocs working so closely together to bring innovative services to market. Today, we've shared a lot of great stories about customers and partners transforming and innovating. All of this is only possible because of everyone in this room. Yes, technology is a big part of it, but ultimately, it's the people who make it happen. At AWS, it's always been a top priority to invest in your people, and more broadly, invest in all people who have the desire to learn new digital skills. About a year ago, Amazon made a commitment to provide free training to 29 million people globally by 2025 to help them acquire digital skills. To build on this commitment, AWS recently announced four new initiatives, and these initiatives will help put skills training into the hands of millions of people, and they will help all of you find and develop diverse cloud talent, especially from underrepresented groups. AWS has also been very busy expanding training programs specifically for partners to make sure that your teams can continue deepening their skills on AWS to help your customers. We'll soon be launching the SAP on AWS certification. This can be used by AWS partners to enhance their SAP competency by highlighting the individual certified consultants to your customers. We're also rolling out the Migration Ambassador Foundations. This is an important training program for your partner sellers to help them acquire the necessary knowledge around migrations so that they can help their customers achieve their business outcomes. Lastly, one of the most effective training programs has been the AWS Game Day program. This is an interactive, hands-on training for builders so that they can go deep into AWS services. Up until now, this was only available to a small number of partners, and I'm, I'm excited to announce that this is now available to all partners who participate in one of our differentiation programs. We will continue to invest heavily into upskilling the global workforce, and we're really proud to work with partners who share that commitment. I hope you are able to tell today that we are absolutely committed to your long-term success. We're really excited to continue working together for the next 15 years and beyond. And now, it's my great pleasure to invite Adam Solipsky, CEO of AWS, to join me on stage for a fireside chat.
are you, Adam? I'm great. How are you, Doug? Well, I know you're super busy this week, so we really appreciate you having you here. It's a busy week for everybody, and it's, uh, it is great to be here. And uh, thank you to all the people who are just flooding in and could not be more excited to be uh, uh, back here in person with the partner community, with our customers, and let's just do it this week, you know? All right. Well, um, so I think uh, everyone's very excited to hear from you, so I have a few questions for you, OK? All right. All right. Let's um, go ahead. So I know you've been with the company now, what, six months, right? I've been back six months, yeah. yeah. 11 years at AWS, starting in 2005, about one year pre-launch. And then uh, first 10 years of uh, doing business, and yep. then uh, gone for four and a half years, and back for six months. Delighted to be back. Well, so what has surprised you the most about AWS business today, or maybe things that have changed since you've been away, since 2016? Uh, well, I'll say you guys have been busy. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So um, when I left, it was a, I thought it was a pretty big business, but a, a $13 billion a year business in late 2016. And uh, of course, now it's you know, over four times, probably almost five times uh, that size. And uh, that's just a reflection of the, the breadth and depth of all the, of the deployments and what everybody's doing in the cloud. So, it's just been uh, just been amazing growth. I think you know the, the team, along with our, our partners, are obviously you know the, the the facts show that you've been doing great things for customers. So I think that's definitely uh, that's definitely one thing. Um, I think uh, you know other things that, that really stand out to me are uh, how much uh, I, I thought there was this huge data acceleration back in 2016. You know, uh, and and how much data was being created, and it's only you know, exponentially increased since then. And so, you know, all of the solutions around uh, data and analytics and the machine learning that's now infusing that, that, that all, of our, uh, all of our customers want. And uh, as you know, we're delivering a lot of solutions ourselves on that. And uh, so much of it is coming from, uh, from the partner community uh, in conjunction with us. And making those things work tightly together, you know, is, uh, is a bigger imperative for customers. And then the other thing I'll say is, um, uh, I don't know if it's, it's changed, but more just accelerated, is just the, the sophistication of you know, how we're working with the partner community now, the, um, the number of programs we have, and the amount of funding, both you know, dollars and people that we, that we put into those. It's, uh, I mean, it's always been really important for AWS, but uh, it's been really gratifying to see how that's grown and expanded and just gotten more sophisticated over the mm -hmm. past few years. Mm -hmm. Great. Has there been anything that hasn't changed since you've been away? Well, there's a lot that hasn't changed, and I think that's a good thing. So um, I, I think our priorities remain, you know, first and foremost for customers, you know, security, operational excellence, you know, performance, and, and making sure that those are always just absolutely at the center. And, you know, we're always going to prioritize those first. We're always going to um, both pursue any opportunities in those spaces and also, you know, shut down any exposure in those spaces. Uh, before we worry about anything else. It's, it's really been foundational. I think it's been incredibly important to why we've built trust with our customers uh, over the years, and, and we're going to you know, continue to prioritize that. Um, I'd say the other thing is um, uh, Amazon is you know, unusual in uh, this principle of customer obsession, and, and not just talking about it, oh, yeah, we have a customer focus, but, but actually walking the walk in, in understanding customers you know, at an incredible level of depth that actually helps to drive our, the core parts of our product development, and then making sure we take the long-term focus about where do we want to be with those customers over time, and, 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 and how do we make decisions which just engender trust and, and build the relationships. And there's lots of other competing priorities that get in the way. So being able to do that ourselves and you know, having a great cadre of partners who have the, the same, um, same attitude, the same values, the same priority, and you know, really put that long-term customer value uh, first and foremost. I mean, that's how we succeed. Hmm. Adam, I know that uh, since you've been back, you've prioritized spending a lot of time with customers and talking to them about all the work that they're doing around digital transformation. I think it would be really interesting for you to maybe share some of the insights or observations that you've had about what customers are doing or what are they asking from us. And I think for the partner community, I think they would love to know how do they differentiate themselves so that they are able to be chosen as that partner to help those customers? Uh, well, I think to take the first part of that in terms of what customers are asking for, and of course it's a lot. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about a few of them now, but um, it, there are a, a, a myriad of demands. And, 
And part of our job, of course, is to separate you know, the good ideas from the, the great ideas and things that we, that we must do now. But I think there are some themes that, uh, that come up continuously. Uh, one we already talked about, which is just data and having more and, and more sophisticated uh, services around data. But I won't uh, kind of go back into that again. Um, another one is, is actually very foundational. It's you know, compute and storage and having you know, better offers there. And uh, we've obviously uh, done a lot with EC2 instances. Customers still want more. Uh, we've done a lot with our, our, our silicon program, you know, with Graviton. Customers still want more. Uh, we've done a lot with different tiers of S3 storage and capabilities there. Customers still want more. So uh, even on the foundational level, it feels like we're, we're absolutely nowhere close to being done with, uh, uh, with having the capabilities that customers want at the very basic level. Um, and then in addition, uh, I think we see more and more uh, conversations around ease of use. Mm. Uh, how can we make the cloud easier to use? How can we make it more purpose-built? Um, I've got this, this use case or business function. How does the cloud apply to that? Or, I'm in this industry or that industry vertical. How does the cloud apply to me? And so we've been working, you know, really over a several year period, but I'd say very intently now on uh, these purpose-built solutions. So obviously uh, Amazon Connect would be a good example, our, our, our contact center solution. So, you know, Barclays, for example, got, uh, got up and running uh, with it, at the beginning of COVID with uh, 6,000 agents working from home at a new Connect setup in 10 days. I mean, absolutely remarkable. So, and we'll bring that, uh, that kind of approach to other, you know, again, business functional or horizontal use cases over time. And then in verticals, you know, we've, we've done a lot with financial services, um, again, a lot with, uh, with the partner community, uh, with healthcare, media and entertainment, more and more with automotive and, and telco, et cetera. And I think you'll, uh, folks will continue to see us building out more purpose-built solutions uh, for those industries and those horizontal use cases. It, again, it's about really bringing the cloud to more and more people, making it more and more accessible, putting the power of that innovation in the hands of more and more people. Mm. Uh, in terms of the second half of your question yeah. about what, what can partners do, uh, I, I think really uh, resonant with that, it, it's all about expertise and specificity. So uh, the first thing is, is, is an evergreen, and it's you know, be experts, you know, be trained, be certified, you know, having lots of good people uh, when when we have partners with just real experts who show up uh, at our customer sites, you know, we hear all about it. And uh, it's just incredibly important for, uh, for maintaining that trust. And so that's, that's on a more general note. And then specifically, um, you know, there, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of places where uh, we're not going to have the right solutions in financial services or we're not going to have the right um, uh, business function solution uh, if we're just trying to do it ourselves. And we've got, to, we've got to hook in with partners who are either already have solutions and we integrate those, or in some cases, in many cases, uh, who are building entirely new solutions to serve a lot of these, uh, these vertical use cases. So I'd say you know, innovate there, you know, work with us, talk to customers yourselves, figure out where there are opportunities to, uh, to serve these use cases, and um, you know, we'll go out to market together. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, hey, Adam, I, I know you were, you know, here in 2012, uh, when we launched the ADOS Partner Network uh, and also the ADOS Marketplace, and we talked about both, and we talked about how quickly those two, uh, you know, areas have been growing for us. Um, you know, as you look forward, for, you know, next 10 years, you know, are there certain things that you're thinking about uh, for our business and also for you know the roles that the partners can play in the next 10 years of our business? Well, I guess first let me back up since you bring up, you know, uh, 20, 2011, 2012. Um, I'll do you one better and I'll go all the way back to uh, okay. you know, 2006 when we, when we launched S3, you know, the kind of first, uh, first GA uh, service for AWS. Um, just to be clear, you know, on, on day one, uh, the partner ecosystem was a, a major focus, a major strategic plank uh, for AWS. And because we were small, we were a startup, we of course didn't have a lot of resources. Um, you know, I think we had one person running our partner community at the time. <laughs> so, so I think sometimes people think, oh, well, so, you know, you didn't, you know, is this a new thing that you care about partners? And, and it's literally been since day one. We've, we've just added more resources and, and hopefully gotten, gotten better at it. 
Um, so I, I think we've had a steadfast focus over the, uh, over the pa past 10, 15 years. And I, I'd say the, uh, the easiest prediction to make is that 10 years from now, uh, partner ecosystem and investment in the ecosystem is still going to be an incredibly central part of the AWS strategy. Um, I mean, honestly, we're all just getting going, and I can't imagine uh, customers uh, being happy with anything except deep, tight partnerships across you know, uh, technology providers and ISVs and systems integrators and consultants and um, resellers and distributors and bars, and uh, we're going to you know, continue to invest uh, in all of those areas. So I think to the last point we were just uh, on, uh, 10 years from now, there will be you know, very sophisticated specific uh, use cases and, and vertical solutions, which uh, I think will be very elegant, will probably abstract you know, even more of this infrastructure, um, you know, e even, even more than um, you know, getting away from the on-premise infrastructure, probably get away in some cases from, from some of the more foundational services. Not for everybody. I think some people will still want that, but there will be a lot more people who just want to interact at a higher level as mm -hmm. well. And you know, we'll see machine learning and AI-driven solutions that really make, uh, uh, make the cloud accessible to you know, very just large numbers of business users and analysts. Mm. You know, Adam, when I speak with uh, a number of our partners, one of the key topics that come up uh, is around the difficulty of finding talent. Uh, so I think a lot of us are seeing this uh, skill shortage uh, in the market right now. And for AWS, I know that we're investing and we're prioritizing uh, and right before you got on stage, I talked about some of the new initiatives that we uh, just announced uh, around training more people. Um, could you share your thoughts about how we're thinking about training more people so that you know, the customers and partners can uh, find a way to close that skills uh, gap? Yeah, it's really important. And, and I've, I've been asked a couple of times, are you talking about training AWS employees? Like, no, no, like, <laughs> we'll train our own people. <laughs> that's, that's up to us, it's our duty. Um, but you know, we're, we're talking about training. We've made a commitment to train 29 million people in cloud skills by the year 2025. Um, and that's an that's a intentionally audacious goal. I think it's very doable. And you know, it, it's very simple. It just starts from need. It starts from demand. And uh, the, again, you look at the explosion of data. Uh, you look at the continued explosion of, of, of use of the cloud, the use of AWS. And then you look at the, the number of people who have exactly the right skills that are needed you know, for the next decade to, uh, to make all of that happen and make all the innovation happen, make all the progress happen that, uh, that we all expect. And there is a big gap. And it's been, uh, it's been you know, it's no secret, it's been widely discussed. So we're, uh, and we don't think we'll solve it by ourselves, but you know, we think that we should, can and should be leaders in that. We want to help lead the way. And so we're really kind of planting a flag and saying, you know, we're going to make sure that those 29 million people are trained. So it's really a bunch. It's not one thing. It's really a bunch of exciting programs. Uh, but a, a, few of the, uh, a few of the new ones, which, which I'm really excited about and, and really delighted that the team has been working on and launching. Uh, one is, um, uh, you know, AWS Skill Builder. Mm. And, and so it's, a, it's, it's an online, uh, it's basically an online learning platform for cloud. Uh, 500 free on-demand uh, classes in 16 languages, accessible obviously from anywhere on the globe. And we think that will you know, may, uh, help create great strides in making cloud training accessible uh, to people who are at home right now for obvious reasons or working in different languages, et cetera. So that's pretty cool. And then um, uh, what I also really like is uh, the team's been very innovative in taking a bunch of those classes, over 100 of them, mm -hmm and actually going to put them on Amazon.com with you know, one click. Well, there's going to be one click access to, uh, to a whole bunch of these training classes. So um, you know, it's going to be pretty easy, like buying anything on Amazon <laughs> to, uh, to access cloud skills training. Um, a, a really, I think, impactful program that uh, we're, we're already seeing great results from and I'm, I'm very passionate about is uh, AWS Restart. Mm. And, and so that's a 12-week intensive but free program, like full time, 12 weeks, you know, you're on. Uh, and it's, it's aimed at people who have all, all or, or no technical skill level. So there's lots of people in there with no technical background. And there have been folks, just inspirational stories, people who've been you know, literally working at a, a gym or at McDonald's, uh, absolutely no technical skills, 
but like this idea, have gone through the program and are now cloud engineers at, at real companies. It, wow. It's incredibly inspirational. And uh, you were going to continue to grow that program as, aggressive, as aggressively as we can um, over the coming months uh, and years. Um, and then we actually open up, it's kind of cool, an AWS Skills Center, mm -hmm. an, actual, an actual physical building. There's still room for physical stuff, right? It's a skills center in Seattle. Figured we'd start in our hometown. And it's a physical space where we have all sorts of uh, demonstrations of uh, the uses of the cloud, you know, from Alexa to gaming and machine learning. Uh, and importantly, where we'll hold uh, classes and, and train people and also be able to have networking events and bring uh, local um, potential employers to, to match up with these students. And I'm hopeful that over time we'll expand that to other locations as That's well. Great. So I could go on for a while about this, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of cut that one no. there. But I think the training is very important. No. And I think all of our partners uh, share the same sentiment that training is super important for us. Um, and if, if more customers are trained, you know, more of them are going to be, you know, demanding solutions, and you know, that's that's good for everybody here in this room. Yeah. Um, by the way, another topic that actually comes up quite often these days is um, sustainability. Our partners are asking us, you know, how can we help them address some of the sustainability questions that they're getting from their customers? Uh, and so, what are the benefits of using the cloud for sustainability causes that the, some of the customers have? And, and how can we better uh, support our partners? It would be great if you can maybe uh, spend some time just sharing uh, our efforts around sustainability. Well, I mean, I, I, I continue to believe personally that uh, you know, climate change is the issue of our generation. And uh, you know, we at Amazon, you know, we, we obviously, we're not going to be the ones to just solve it, but we really want to be leaders. We think that we can help galvanize you know, action uh, in a lot of quarters to, uh, to come up with innovative uh, solutions, which the world you know, desperately needs. So um, the con really across Amazon, uh, we continue to do a lot of things for sustainability and, and, and for climate change. And um, I personally am very passionate about this issue. Uh, personally, I'm really looking forward to helping to marshal all the resources that Amazon's already investing here. So you know, we, uh, we created this climate pledge in 2019 uh, which is a pledge as, uh, across Amazon to be net carbon zero by 2040, which is 10 years ahead of the Paris Accords. And uh, we've actually already uh, gotten over 200 other companies to sign the climate pledge as well. And that's what I meant about you know, sort of helping to encourage and, and galvanize. And, uh, and there are uh, great members of the partner community who have yeah. signed up, uh, Accenture, Deloitte, uh, Emphasis, uh, Atos, uh, IBM. Um, I'm sure there are others, I'll just cap it there. Yeah. And we're really grateful, and, and by the way, if, if folks here, have, if their companies have not signed the Climate Pledge, we you know, really would love to work with you to, to yeah. do so. Um, and, but then moving in 2040, it's, it's, uh, it's not that far away, and there's a lot of innovation required, but, but there's things to do in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And so as part of that, we also said first that we we're gonna be 100% uh, renewable energy powered across Amazon by 2030. And then we said, no, nah, that's not fast enough. So we backed it up by five years and, and said we're going to be 100% renewable energy by 2025. And we are on track for that. Uh, I think we're ready at, at about 65%. Um, and, and how are we getting there? Well, it, it's through real stuff. You know, it's not through smoke and mirrors. So um, we, Amazon is the largest purchaser of renewable energy in the world. Mm. And we're, we have committed, funded projects uh, that's a, the, enough to power the equivalent of 2.5 million homes, you know, right now. Um, so it's important progress. Uh, you know, we have we have a long way to go. By the way, we're doing things with water and doing really cool things in the data centers. Like you know, number one, doing things like evaporative cooling, which is you know dramatically more efficient. And then you end up with uh, a, a, a portion of that water remaining. We make sure the water's clean. We're actually using it in irrigation in places like Oregon, where there's a lot of a lot of agriculture going on. So really trying to be as sustainable as possible, uh, making sure that uh, the concrete that we use in data centers uh, is as low carbon as possible and using a lot of uh, really neat technologies to make that happen. So it's not one effort, it's a bunch of efforts. You know, needless to say, it's gonna be an effort that plays itself out over you know, many, many years. But uh, you know, we're very passionate about really being not only local citizens and, and national citizens, being part of those communities, but also being you know, really positive contributors to the global community. So I'd love the partners to sign the global uh, climate, to sign the climate pledge. I'd love the partners to help us innovate in, 
um, how, we, uh, how we become more sustainable all across Amazon and how we encourage you know, other countries, nations, companies, individuals to do mm -hmm. so as well. That's great. All right, Adam. Um, we're running uh, out of time, Adam. Um, any parting uh, words for our partners today? How long do we have, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a few things. I would, a couple of things I'll say. One is, uh, really, I, I remind myself all the time that uh, it, it still is day one. That's an, a famous Amazon expression. It is so early. We're going to look back in 10 years and say, do you remember how early we were in 2021? And you know, how, how, er how many more customers still had to adopt and how many more amazing solutions we still had to build. Uh, all the innovation, really, in the grand scheme, I think, is still in front of us, despite the amazing things that we collectively you know, ha have done up till now. So I just want to encourage any everybody in this room to take that, uh, that long-term attitude and also to, to remember that you know, let's all have fun. And it, it's fun to innovate. And uh, the opportunity in front of us you know, remains incredible. And, and most of it is honestly still in front of us. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's one important thought. Um, a second is that uh, just how deeply we appreciate the partnership with everybody here. And um, we enjoy it, for one thing. And second is that it's just really, really important to our customers. They need it. And you know, we are fully behind you know, whatever is, are the most important things for our customers. So we're going to have to keep on innovating together. You know, we need the, everything from the, the SaaS solutions to the, uh, the new um, yeah, uh, SI solutions around you know, uh, data and, uh, and industry use cases to you know, new ways of uh, uh, getting solutions out to customers, distributing them in more countries. And, to more industries, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to continue to uh, put very significant resources into everything we do in the partner ecosystem, helping customers you know, move over to the cloud. That takes funding. Um, having people, uh, the, we continue to, to grow and innovate in terms of having a larger and larger field presence ourselves. That helps us to work with our partners, helps us to create demand uh, at customers, which is so often fulfilled by partners. So we're going to try and, and, and really put our shoulder to the wheel and, uh, and, and do our part to, uh, to kind of bring that world into, into being. Um, and then I also just want to say thank you to you and, and also to Sandy and, of course, the rest of the partner teams and uh, for the, all the amazing work you've done. Um, and uh, we also continue to have uh, you know, the excitement of other leaders coming in. We're excited to have Ruba here as well. But, uh, but the, the teams, if, you know, if I think back to, uh, to 2011, 2012, earlier than that as well, um, and then the work that you folks have done over the past few years. It's been great work. You know, all I had to do was get out of the way for five years, and everything <laughs> got much more sophisticated. Um, but you know, it's really on behalf of our, of our partners, and, and at the end of the day, on behalf of our customers. And um, it's really important work. So um, just thanks to everybody again for being here in, in uh, Las Vegas with us, or um, lots of folks remotely as, as well tuning in this week. And uh, we just look forward to. Uh, exploring and celebrating and uh, uh, making progress together. Thank you so much, Adam. <laughs> and, and, and with that, uh, I want to say thank you, uh, everyone, for attending today. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with all of you. Uh, there's so much more that we have to do together. Uh, but I think under Ruba's leadership and Adam's leadership, I think partners are in good hands. So. Uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the week. And I hope to run into many of you at the Partner Expo this week. Thank you.